So I want to talk about something that I haven't talked about before on this channel, and it's something that I have done with my own intermittent fasting diet and journey. So approximately around three months ago, I was just eating in the way that I normally would, which I'd break my daily intermittent fast later in the day and finish in eating my last meal of the day quite late in the day as well, so late evening time. And my girlfriend that I'm currently with, that I've been with for almost three months, she was doing intermittent fasting when I met her, she's still doing it now. But what I noticed with her, and we talked about this a lot between each other, is that she tends to eat normally around 9 to 10 a.m. and then tries finishing her last meal of the day as early as possible, which, which would normally be early afternoon. And yeah, after being around her for quite some time, I felt naturally drawn to start experimenting with this alongside her because I'm always about trying out different things and keeping my mind open. Yes, something may be working for me very, very well, but you never know, there might be something better on the horizon and you're not gonna know until you try it out. So I thought, okay, let's just give it a go. So I started experimenting with it and I just found from doing this that it just seems to be the best for me to actually finish eating my last meal of the day around lunchtime. And what I'm gonna say is I'm not really rigid with this. What I am doing with this is making sure that I normally don't start eating until around 11 a.m. And ideally, I prefer to finish around 1 p.m. But my eating and drinking when I am in the eating window and breaking my fast can vary from time to time. So at one point for around a month, I would break it with around five fresh young Thai coconut waters to really hydrate myself because I was doing hard dry fasting every day around 22 hours, which that means abstaining from all water and food consumption and getting any water contact on my skin as well. To talk about this more in depth, I just posted a video to talk about what is a dry fast, the difference between a soft and hard dry fast. If you haven't seen that video, I'll put a link for it up above. I'd recommend you go and check that out if you don't know much on dry fasting. So when I was doing that, yeah, five coconuts, and then around an hour later, I would go and eat a variety of different plant-based whole foods, mostly on a vegan diet, and eat as many calories as I possibly could. But now for a while, I've been experimenting with different things. So a lot of time I'm not doing that now, and I normally break the fast still around 11 a.m., but I normally have some fruit or this mixture of like shilla, Shit, and these other different things to help optimize my hormone production, neurotransmitter production, and flood my body with an abundance of electrolytes, minerals, and vitamins, and other different micronutrients to make me feel the best that I can. And then I normally have a big protein-rich smoothie around half an hour to an hour after that, and then I go and eat a big meal. So if I'm not doing the thing with coconut water, it's gonna make my eating window longer because I'm having like one extra thing, which is that mixture of supplements. So with what I'm doing at the moment, having that, the protein smoothie, and then a cooked food meal, my eating window can normally vary anywhere from 11 a.m. to 2 to 3 p.m. But I always try and aim to finish eating as early as possible. And I try and leave a big enough gap in between each thing I'm consuming so I can make sure that it's left my stomach fully before piling more food in there, which then could have a negative effect on my digestion, give me diarrhea, bloating, gas, and so on. And yeah, it's very simple why I've switched it up to what I am doing now that I just explained to you, is I am trying to eat more calories and more protein and more of everything to just help increase my muscle growth, because they're just the results that I want to achieve. But I know, and I've mentioned this in other videos before, the longer the eating window is, the less greater the autophagy benefits are gonna be, and the longevity benefits and immune system boosting effects that intermittent fasting can give you, and also extended fasting as well. So it's a bit of a trade-off, and I've mentioned this before in videos, you wanna find out what your goals is with intermittent fasting or an extended fast, and then you can modify it to your goals and your needs so you can get the best results from it. And I'm gonna put a quick chart here, seeing as I'm talking about this now, from Dr. Mindy, where as you can see here, it has different hours and it talks about insulin and ketones, autophagy and so on. And this chart can help you work out 
what the best fasting length is for you, dependent on your goals. So check out this chart thoroughly, and then this can help you modify up your fasting regime so you can get the greatest benefits from whatever benefits you're looking to gain from it. So yeah, why do I love this? Well, first off, finishing later in the day and hydrating a lot after a dry fast, and I go to bed at 8 p.m. every single night, and I've done this for years and years and years, I end up waking up a lot to urinate. So by finishing my eating and drinking window early in the day, I wake up less times in the night, so I have a better quality sleep, so then I can feel the best the next day upon awakening. And also, what I've learned is, over a long period of time, I've known this for years and years and years, is our digestive enzymes and our digestive organs are functioning at their best and at the most optimal level in the middle of the day. So it's also helping optimize my digestion and assimilation of the foods that I'm consuming. And when I am actually gonna go to bed later on, so yeah, I go to bed around 8 p.m., normally finish anywhere from one to 3 p.m. That gives my body hours and hours and hours and hours to optimize digestion and assimilation as much as possible. And then when I get to bedtime, which I live in Thailand, so it's quite hot and I don't like putting the air con on at all, is that my body temperature is way lower at nighttime. And if you look into sleep experts out there, they say we need to be a certain body temperature to fall asleep and for us to have the best quality and length of sleep possible. So I am someone as well, this is something to remember, that has quite a high body temperature. I always have on many different diets, it's just, the way that I'm made up. So for me, having that body temperature just gives me the best sleep that I can possibly have, which is win-win all round. And I also find that it just feels way more comfortable when I'm going to bed, because a lot of time I'd eat up until bedtime, and then it's really heavy and it can be very uncomfortable and it just didn't feel right to me. It feels so much better to go to bed where my stomach is flat and doesn't feel full whatsoever. And just overall, I'm just finding that mentally, and physically, I'm just feeling way better all round. My energy levels are more stable, and it is just absolutely amazing every single way. And I'm not just gonna put it down to finishing earlier in the day. It is massively due to me doing intermittent dry fasting the majority of the time, which I don't do it every single day. I do strive to do it as much as I possibly can because it does seem to give me the best benefits that I'm looking to get over a short period and long period of time. It just makes me feel the best. But again, I'm not rigid with this. And pretty much the only time that I do break the dry fast with some water is because I get very hot in Thailand. So say I'm training and I'm sweating loads and it's out of my fasting and eating window, then yes, I will want to drink some very cold water because it helps to cool me down. And also, it just helps me stay super, super lean. When I'm in that hard dry fast, you can see my abs and just all over muscle stress and definition is way more improved, especially when I'm doing the intermittent fast with a hard dry fast. And if you didn't know, I'm gonna be making a video very soon on dry fasting, how it actually burns fat three times faster than water fasting. Yes, you heard me right three times faster. So if you're someone that wants to get the greatest weight loss benefits, make sure you learn as much information as you can on this. Stay safe when do it. Start experimenting with dry fasting, shorter ones, and then work your way up over time. And man, you're just gonna see that any excess fat just burns off you so, so more rapidly than it would with water fasting. And a cool little benefit is, with the intermittent dry fasting, when I actually come to drinking some sort of liquid source, which is normally just fresh coconut water from young Thai green coconuts that are grown here on this island, is it makes me just appreciate the liquid way more. It tastes way better to me, and it's like, oh my God, when you haven't had any liquid source for ages, it's just like a very profound experience. And the same, when I'm doing a hard dry fast, if I go and dive in the sea, once I'm in my eating and fasting window, oh my God, it is like, heaven, it's like someone has given me some sort of euphoric that it's just like, yeah, it's really, really, really surreal. And it just makes me very aware with the intermittent dry fasting 
that a lot of time when we're wanting water and desiring it, it's just out of habit or because we think that we're dehydrated or some other reasons. Just like when people get into intermittent fasting, they start to discover a lot of time when they're eating it was due to emotional reasons or being bored or some other things as well. So yeah, if you're someone that doesn't have any experience with eating around lunchtime and finishing around this time, I highly recommend that you give it a go. And I'm telling you, if you're someone that wants to optimize your sports performance, if finishing early on and then training later in the day, I found this, a lot of people have found this as well that do a very similar thing to me. It just makes it when you work out that you can train harder and longer and just optimize your workout and also recovery time afterwards as well. And one of the main reasons gonna be is your body has got a lot of calories from the food that you've consumed hours and hours before you worked out and then your body's able to use that up whilst you are training so then you can get the best workout possible with whatever type of exercise regime that you're doing. And one last thing, I've done it before, not that long ago, where I traveled and intermittent hard dry fast for 25 hours, almost 26 hours and just ate one solid meal. Man, that was definitely the one that made me feel the best. So yeah, I'm gonna keep on with what I'm doing. I'm always up for switching things up, like I said, in this video, I explained to you very clearly what I'm doing now, but it could always change in the future. And if it does, I'll let you know and keep you updated. So if you have any questions on anything that I talk to you about in this video, leave them down below. Down there, not there. <laughs> and if you like the video, give us a thumbs up, please share with others, and don't forget to subscribe to receive a lot more videos from me on a regular basis. And man, life is so good. Make the most of your life. Surround yourself with the most positive, uplifting people, not people that bring you down. And just go in the direction to create more of what you want rather than what you don't want. Because whether you know it or not, consciously and subconsciously, you're creating what you want in your life. We are all the creators of our reality. So why not just make the conscious choice to create more of what you want rather than just floating about in life and letting your subconscious mind and conscious mind create what you truly don't want. So as always, stay fit, stay energetic, and go and get those gains. Peace.